Hello, I'm Rick Toon and I'm a luthier. I build fine custom guitars and basses for musicians, both acoustic and electric. And one of the things that I like to focus on in design is ergonomics, basically how well an instrument fits a player. And what I thought we could do in this video is talk a little bit about some of the thought processes behind an instrument I'm currently working on called Dove, which is a six string solid body electric guitar. It's designed to fit a smaller player, in particular a woman. My model here is five foot two, about 118 pounds. And yet I want to emphasize this guitar is a full-size guitar. It's the same length strings as a Fender Telecaster. One of the obstacles we face in designing instruments is how an instrument relates to the body. In this series of sketches I want to show some of those factors and how they interact. This would be a typical guitar. Notice how it's clutched to the body. The left elbow is extended back in order to get the hand close enough to fret the instrument comfortably. The torso is twisted slightly in relation to the knees. And the right elbow extends forward in order to reach around the instrument to pluck and strum. Although most of us are used to playing this position, it's really kind of awkward. The solutions that I've done and I've seen other players do is to rotate the torso in relation to the instrument and in relation to the knees in order to compensate. So this allows the left arm to hang more freely and the right arm to wrap around the instrument without extending so far out. The problem with this position of course is that it places a lot of stress on the spine because you're basically holding your torso in an unnatural position in relation to your legs for an extended period of time. One of the solutions I've been thinking about is rotating the instrument in relation to the player. What I'm seeking is a relaxed skeleton, so everything in line, knees, shoulders, elbows, head, comfortable and in sort of a neutral position, and then the instrument accommodating that neutral position. I'll switch back and forth between the drawings here so you get a sense of, of how that would work. So of course the difficulty involved is how do we change the shape of an instrument in order to make this accommodation. Dove begins as a slab of wood just like a typical electric guitar only in this case I made the slab thick enough that I can begin to sculpt it to mimic some of the contours of the human body. So here we are in the early stage of construction. The neck's been attached to the body and the sculptural process has begun. In this image we're looking at the back of the instrument and I'm going to point out a few of the features beginning with the asymmetrical slotted headstock design which is an experiment that I'm trying primarily to save weight yet retain the counterbalance found in having a headstock unlike a headless instrument. The headstock flows into the trapezoid neck profile which is a new shape that I first tried on the bass guitar Orchid and it's designed to accommodate both a pinch grip as well as um, a conventional proper hand position where the thumb rides up and down that flat strip on the back of the neck. It's a new shape, it's a very comfortable shape on bass and this will be the first time that I attempt it on a guitar, so this is another experiment. This is an alternate view of the back of the instrument and some of the sculptural features are beginning to emerge, most noticeably the hip hole, which is a divot that I've begun to carve into the back of the guitar to accommodate the iliac crest on the human pelvis, basically that point of the bone that sticks out near the pockets on the side of your jeans. The contours of the back of the instrument are about 80% complete at this point, and what is beginning to emerge is the overall concave shape, both from top to bottom and from front to back. Essentially the instrument has been hollowed out in order to wrap around the midsection of a person, both belly and this is a good view down the neck toward the body and here you can clearly see the trapezoid profile neck shape as well as the dish, the concave dish that the back has become uh, both the wood removed from the hip hole as well as the wood removed between the upper front lobe and the upper rear lobe which will accommodate the rib cage when it's held up to the body. 
We switch now to a view of the face of the instrument where we can clearly see how much wood has been removed, how much sculpting has been done in order to accommodate the right forearm as it drapes across the top of the instrument to pluck and to strum. The goal is to provide a seamless transition so that your, your, there's no sharp edge for your, for your arm to rub against. Here we can also clearly see the transition from the trapezoid profile neck into the body. This area is still under construction, but as you notice, it gives almost unlimited access to the upper frets. Here's the guitar in relation to a human body, standing position. Note how the instrument seems to almost wrap around the right hip and extend from the body on a slight angle. Uh, two things I want to point out here are the relationship of the torso to the hips and the fact that they're in alignment. Her shoulders are in alignment with her hips. And the relaxed position of both elbows and arms. They just fall gently from the shoulders down and then the wrist drapes across the body to a comfortable playing position. And even her fretting hand, um, there's no effort and no strain. It just naturally falls where it needs to in order to comfortably fret the instrument. Here she's rotated and we can get an alternate view of the relaxed position of the arms and elbows. And in particular, how that right arm and forearm just comfortably drapes across the upper bit of the instrument to a natural, assume a natural playing position. One of the unforeseen benefits of the hip hole that I had not thought about while I was designing it was that in addition to relieving pressure on the hip by carving away wood in the back of the instrument, when I extended the hole all the way through to the front, it forms a cavity or a space that provides a float for the carpal tunnel area and the wrist bone of the right, of the right hand. You still have the benefits of contact with the instrument as the forearm drapes across the upper bit of the body, but the wrist area itself floats. It's a really fun feeling to, to align yourself with where the bridge will be and yet have no pressure on that part of the wrist. Players assumed a modified classical position with the neck of the instrument oriented more vertically in relation to the body. Um, this is slightly different from a, a traditional classical position, most notably because the body of the instrument rests against the right thigh instead of the left. This instrument was designed to be held in this position with an over-the-shoulder strap, but it offers some of the benefits, the ergonomic benefits, particularly for the left hand, of that more vertical playing position. In particular, note how her thighs are parallel to the floor and her torso is not twisted in relation to her hips. Her posture is, is very relaxed and comfortable, essentially neutral. The final position that we'll consider today is a traditional seated position with the body of the instrument draped across the right thigh. Most players tend to play in this position, especially when playing for long periods of time or during studio work. And what I'd like to point out here is the natural balance point of Dove and how despite the fact that our hands are not touching the instrument, it remains oriented to her body in a comfortable playing position, which means that if she actually were to play, no effort would be required to hold the instrument. I'd like to thank you for joining me today, and in particular my lovely wife Trisha for agreeing to model. As you can see, I've put her to sleep. Don't worry, she got a back rub and uh, dinner out of the arrangement. So, if you want to find out more about me and my thoughts, www.tuneguitars.com. Again, Rick Tune Luthier. See you next time.